in diagrams and how to calculate the execution time of the 18 time process. So it is very simple to calculate the execution time of the microprocessor 18 85 in all other microprocessors. If you, fo if you just follow the following uh, procedures. So firstly, you should know how microprocessors work. Uh, and as the hardware is required for the survival of a human being, the clock is re uh, required for the proper operation of, of different sections of the microprocessor. All actions in the microprocessors are controlled by either an edge triggered or uh, uh, leading edge or trailing edge. The leading edge is when the, micro, uh, the clock is turning from the zero up to become a one. That's the leading edge. The trailing edge uh, is when the, uh, the clock turns from on to off. That's the trailing edge. On. So that means it's a full clock cycle. If a man is asked to carry six bags of wheat, each weighing five, uh, 50 cases, he may take six times to perform this task. Uh, but a stronger man can take um, three times, maybe carrying two bags at a time. Thus, uh, the first man takes six machine cycles and the second man takes three machine cycles. Similarly, a machine may execute one instruction in as, as many as three machine cycles, while the other machine can, ex, uh, can, can perform the same task in only one machine cycle. That depends on the strength or the capacity of that machine to, over, to process. Um, each machine cycle is composed of many clock cycles, which are called t-states. Since uh, the data instruct and, and instruction both are stored in the memory, the microprocessor performs fetch operation to read the instruction or data and then execute that instruction. The time taken by the microprocessor to execute one instruction is calculated in terms of clock periods, which are also called t-states. So, for instance, okay, uh, machine instructions, machine cycles and instruction cycle. In one instruction cycle, we may have main machine cycles, maybe one, two, or three machine cycles. So, a single instruction cycle comprises of a fetch cycle and an execution cycle. Usually, a fetch cycle, if we can look at this diagram, uh, starting from this point, from T1 up to T4, those are the clock periods. It means that it, it, it takes three, uh, sorry, four clock periods. Then that's the first machine cycle, the fetch cycle. Then the execution cycle starts from state 5 to state 7. It means it, uh, it's taking three clock cycles. The first <coughs> machine cycle uh, of every instruction is the opcode fetch, operation code fetch. If, uh, in that op opcode fetch, the T1, T2, and T3 clocks are used for the basic memory read operations to read the data in the memory. And then the fourth uh, clock cycle and beyond are, are now used to interpret or to decode the instruction. Then microprocessor proceeds to machine cycle two and other machine cycles. Every instruction cycle consists of one, two, three, four, or five machine cycles. And the instruction 
can be a one byte instruction and uh, up to three byte instruction in 8085. So, uh, 8085 is eight, uh, it's an 8-bit um, processor. So, the first 8 bits obtained during the opcode fetch are always uh, interpreted as the opcode of an instruction. Then the following byte to the operation is specified by the opcode. So the machine first fetches the instruction. After picking the instruction, that instruction is decoded. After decoding the instruction, then the next steps are then follow, which are on that operation code, which is opcode. So for example, we have uh, the instruction uh, move BC. That instruction means move or copy the contents of register C to register B. Okay? So, if you are closely looking to that instruction, uh, the opcode fetch or the operation code uh, is move BC. So the first fetch will copy uh, that opcode from memory on that three clocks. Then the fourth clock will interpret what 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 is specified in that instruction. Then that that that, that is the forty states. Then the second machine cycle so that means that the first machine cycle the second machine cycle will then copy the data from register c to b so in order to calculate the execution time you should know the frequency of the microprocessor the 8085 microprocessor uh, so if, if you are given a frequency of 3.125 megahertz and it means 3.125 uh, million uh, of instruction uh, per second and in this time our time the clock let's take for example we have one t state so if you want to calculate the execution time for one t state we say one over one as yes, one over three hundred three point one two five megahertz which is equal to zero point three two microseconds so one t state is zero point one two microseconds so the read memory read of three t states is mean that we, we just use uh, three multiplied by zero point Three two microseconds, and you get zero point nine six microseconds. So, in order to find the execution time of the instruction move BC, that instruction has a total of seven T states. So, if we have a total of seven T states, we just say seven multiplied by zero point three two zero microseconds and the answer we get is that it will take uh, 2.24 microseconds to execute that instruction. Similarly with the move immediate uh, instruction move immediately uh, 04H 04H is the immediate data which is being moved uh, into B, re register B. So in that, the opcode, operation code, which will, uh, will specify the instruction, or which, which, which will specify the operation to be carried out, uh, will take four T states. That's the first machine cycle. Then the second machine cycle is read that immediate data. Then the total 
um, T states is saving. Similarly to what we've done pre previously, seven T states, so we multiply seven by 0 0.320 and we get the answer of 2.24 microseconds. So the move uh, BC and the move uh, MMVI, you've needed the data B04H, it takes the same time. Okay, we also have another instruction, uh, store, uh, store accumulator to memory address 4056H. In this instruction, there is a memory operation. We are storing the contents of the accumulator to a memory location 405H. Okay? So in this instruction, we have the opcode fetch, the first instruction. The operating code is taken from memory and decoded. It takes four key states. Then, uh, the 885 is a 16-bit memory. So, in order to specify that memory, the lower order address is taken on the second machine cycle to specify the lower order address. Then, the third machine cycle to specify the higher order address. After this, then we now have uh, the specified the memory location for 056H. Then the third, uh, the fourth machine cycle is the write, memory write. We are now writing the contents of the accumulator to that memory. So all in all, it's, uh, it takes a total of 13 T states to complete that instruction. So since we have uh, 13 T states, it is now easy for us to calculate the execution time. The execution time, like what we have done previously, uh, we just say total, total T states multiplied by uh, the time taken by one T state, which is 0 0.320 microseconds. So the total will be 4.16 microseconds to complete that uh, instruction. Uh, you can try the following questions. You can pause the video and then try the following questions. Calculate the execution time for the following 885 instructions. Move A, B. Move immediately A, 0, 7, uh, H. Move, uh, sorry, load accumulator direct memory for memory address the 3040H you can pause the video and try to do that then you continue playing the video ok the first the first uh, question move AB uh, the uh, it takes two machine cycles. The first machine cycle is the opcode fetch. We are fetching the operation code and it takes four T states. Then the second, we are copying data from memory, uh, from register B to register A. So there is a total of seven T states. Given the frequency of 3.125 megahertz, one, T state will take 0 0.32 microseconds. Then uh, three T states for memory read uh, on the first machine cycle, memory read. Then the other 40 T state will be the decoding of the instruction. So for memory read, it takes 0 0.69 microseconds. And the whole execution time of the instruction, 70 states, 7 multiplied by 0 
320 is equal to 2.24 microseconds. Then, similarly for move immediately A, uh, 0, 7, H, it means we are, we are moving the immediate data, 0, 7, H, to the register A or to the accumulator. So the first opcode fetch, it takes 40 states, and then reading the immediate data into the the register A or the accumulator takes three states. So the total 70 states. To calculate the execution time, we say uh, the frequency which will be given over one, uh, one over the frequency in order to get the execution time, the T state. After that, we say the total number of T states multiplied by uh, the time taken by a single T state, in this case 7 multiplied by 0 0.320 microseconds equal to 2.324 microseconds. Then for the load accumulator direct from memory address 304H, it means we are loading the accumulator from the memory address which is specified. So. That's a three byte instruction. There is a memory operation. We are reading the data. The data is stored in memory. So the op uh, op opcode fetch will take, uh, as usual, 40 states. Then we should specify the memory address where our data is. Since our registers are eight, uh, eight bits, since 885 is an 8 bit microprocessor, the first, uh, sorry, and the memory address is 16 bit. So, the memory, to specify the memory, we use lower order address and the higher order address. So, the first will be the lower order address, which will take the lower order address of that memory. Then, the second machine cycle, uh, sorry, the third machine cycle will specify the higher order address and also takes three T states. After specifying the address, then there is a memory read. We are now reading from, from the memory to the accumulate. It will take three T states. So the total number of T states is 13 T states. To calculate, we just use our formula as usual. Uh, the number of T states, which is 13 multiplied by the time taken to execute one T state. 13 multiplied by 0 0.320 microseconds equal to 4.16 microseconds. Uh, so we are done with our first lecture on how to execute or how to calculate the execution time in an 885 microprocessor. You can do a favor by liking me on YouTube or sub subscribing.